In this video, we're going to discuss the ratio test and the root test. First, let's start with the ratio test. So ratio test. So for the ratio test, we have to have a series and the terms of the series can't be zero. So we have an infinite sum with non-zero terms. And then we take the limit. So we let the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n and we set this equal to L. And note that here L could be infinite, okay? It could be equal to infinity. So there's three cases. So if L is less than one, the series converges absolutely. So we get absolute convergence. Really strong here. Remember, if something converges absolutely, it converges in the regular sense as well. If L is bigger than one, we have divergence. So our series will diverge. And if L is equal to one, the test fails. So we have no information, so no info. So that's the ratio test. Now let's look at the root test, which is very similar. So root test. I was going to make a separate video for each, but I thought, you know, let's just do them both in one video because they're so similar. In this case, we just have a sub n, and it's a series. So we don't have the other requirement of non-zero terms as we do in the ratio test. By the way, you can see why we have to have non-zero terms, right? We're dividing by something, so that can't be equal to zero. Otherwise, we have uh, an issue. And then we let the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of the absolute value of a sub n, we set this equal to l. And here again, l could be equal to infinity. And the beautiful thing is that the result is exactly the same. So if l is less than 1, just like the ratio test, we have absolute convergence. If L is bigger than 1, we have divergence. And if L is equal to 1, we have no information. Okay, now that we've discussed both tests, let's do a simple example of each. So let's do uh, an example here. Call it EX for example. And the question will be, does the series uh, converge or diverge? So we have the infinite sum as n runs from 1 to infinity of 5 to the n over n factorial. Okay, let's go ahead and use the ratio test. So how do you know to use it? Well, typically when you have factorials or something that looks like this, you can use the ratio test. You can always try it. And if it doesn't work, um, then you know you just try something else. So here, a sub n is this piece here. So the ratio test says we have to start by taking the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n. So this is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity. So let's see here. A sub n plus 1 basically means that we replace all of the n's with n plus 1's. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So 5 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. You might be thinking, hey, wait, aren't you supposed to divide? You're right. I've only written down a sub n plus 1. Now we're supposed to divide by a sub n. However, when you divide by a sub n, it's much easier to multiply by the reciprocal. So this is times n factorial over 5 to the n. Okay, so uh, division is the same thing as multiplication by the reciprocal. So this is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity 
of the absolute value. So you can do some simplification here. Notice that 5 to the m plus 1 is really 5 to the n times 5 to the 1. And this is all being divided by 5 to the n. So you see that it cancels and you get 5. This is properties of exponents, by the way. When you multiply 5 to the n times 5 to the 1, you just basically add the exponents, and that gives you m plus 1. So we're left with 5 up top, so that's kind of nice. And then n factorial over m plus 1 factorial. So n factorial is n, n minus 1, etc. 3, 2, 1. m plus 1 factorial, maybe it's been a while since you've seen it, is uh, m plus 1 n, n minus 1, dot, 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 etc. So when you have n over m, n factorial, rather, over m plus 1 factorial, what you can do is you can write this as n factorial, and then m plus 1 factorial is n plus 1, and then it's n, and minus 1, so the rest of it is n factorial, so these cancel, and this, this gives you 1 over m plus 1. So this is over n plus 1. We actually don't need the absolute value here because everything is positive, but let's just leave it. If you take this limit, you get 0 because as n approaches infinity, 5 over m plus 1 gets smaller and smaller and smaller. This is less than 1, so converges by the ratio test. This type of simplification that you see even in just this really simple example is a reoccurring thing. It comes up over and over again. Um, the more of these you do, um, the easier uh, it becomes and the better you get. Uh, here's another example. Say we have the infinite sum as n runs from 1 to infinity of, let's say, the natural log of n over n. It's all being raised to the nth power. Okay, so let's go ahead and use the root test. And the reason I'm thinking root is because the whole thing is to the nth power, so it might be a good idea. So the root test says we take the limit as n approaches infinity of the nth root of the absolute value of a sub n. So this is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of the nth root of the absolute value of ln n over n to the n. You'll notice that the absolute value does not matter at all, right? The natural log here is uh, going to be uh, positive uh, for n bigger than or equal to 1. So we can drop the absolute value. And we can also drop the n and the root because the square root, the nth root of something to the nth power, it cancels. So this is just going to be ln n over n because right, these cancel. And this is 0 because n grows faster than the natural log. This is less than 1, so converges by the root test. So really simple example, but it illustrates the point of how to go through the procedure. I hope this video has been helpful.